the unisex bike and the frame actually fits for all. So we added these adjustable stems, which we're gonna we're gonna show you in a bit, and the suspension seat post, so many people can easily fit, find a good position to ride this bike. So one of the cool parts about this bike is um, people are usually fooled with the size of the frame because it's such a tiny footprint, and people think, well, I'm about six foot two, and then would I be able to fit it? Well, the answer to that is definitely a yes, because you can actually adjust the seat post according to your height. And for example, right now I am 5'11, and this, if I put this high, I cannot sit on this too high for me. And you can adjust the front handlebar with the easy adjustable stem. You just pull it, and you find your position, and you just lock it. So with this, we ensure that you can actually always find a suitable position for you to ride. For example, for me, it's about somewhere around here, so that I can easily ride it. It's a normal size bike. And like both of us have different heights and different riding positions. So sometimes, if he's not riding, I want to ride the bike. I can in seconds adjust the height for you because we have some customers. Like they are couples, they are able to buy only one bike and they want to share it. And in the conventional bikes, it's very difficult to adjust the height because conventional ones have screws over there, so without the tools, it's not possible to adjust the height. Oh, even even with tools, after a while, they become um, and the nuts become blind, so you cannot actually do anything. So even with the screws, it's not adjustable after. Last year, when we were in Amsterdam, we parked our bike, and after when we go back, there were so many bikes parked on the right and left side of it, and we had so much difficulty to pull it back. So we had a different idea. Can you explain it yeah, to so us? So basically what happens is when you have too many bikes parked right on the left side of your bike, it is almost impossible to get next to it and pull it back. So why, what we did is we just put the handle here. So even when you're at the back, you can easily just pull your bike from the parking lot at ease. And this is especially um, handy in cities like San Francisco where like there are lots of bikes and they're parked right next to each other. So you're not, you don't always have the chance to get next to your bike and to, and just slide it out from the parking lot. So we just like put this. So what you're gonna need to do is just pull your bike from here. A lot of people will think that a compact bike like at this size have some disadvantages. Like they will think that they cannot carry a lot of stuff with it. It doesn't have a lot of holding capacity. So can you explain like, it's like a functional bike. People Can people use it for their daily commutes? Well, we designed this bike uh, thinking that you're going to use it in your daily commute. I personally commute with the bike, bicycle with this bicycle right now on my daily basis. So when we were designing it, we um, we made it less of what we need when we're riding on a daily basis. So you, basically you definitely need a rear rack with pannier holders and these uh, bungee cords to secure whatever you put on it. And these, this rear rack can actually carry a lot of stuff. And we also have these pannier bags which are on sale on our website you can just clip them on here and you can put one more here and you're set to go and this basket has a different assembly compared to other baskets can you tell us what is the difference and what kind of advantage does it have yeah the baskets in the market that you uh, aftermarket baskets that you buy are usually either connected to the fork or they're attached to the handlebar uh, but whereas we put these two locations on the frame it's where you can um, connect the basket to the, directly to the frame with two huge screws and nuts so that this would be extremely sturdy and nothing would happen to it. And the best part is um, when you put the basket to the fork or the handlebar what happens is when you turn the handlebar the basket also turns so you, your center of gravity when you're riding it moves. By assembling the front basket into the main frame we avoid that uh, problem because if you're actually carrying something heavy and the basket turns with you, that means that your sensor of gravity is going to move. So this is much more safer when you are riding the bike. Now let's talk about the display. Can you explain the display? This is the standard display that we use in all of our models. As you can see, there are six different pedal assist levels. And then if you go to zero, you can actually use a throttle then if you go to zero which is something unique for central motors. Most of the central motors, like mid-drive motor systems, don't have those throttle function. Like, we try different brands like the Bosch, Brose, Shimano, none of them has it. And in the United States, people want the throttle, right? 
Yeah, they do. Like um, the thing is, yeah, it's nice to ride your bike and have the feeling of riding, feeling of riding a bike. But it's not fun when you're going when when you have a half an hour um, commute to work or whatever. No one wants to be covered in sweat. Or especially if you're like in a city somewhere like San Francisco or whatever, no one wants to actually go uphill. So this is where the throttle actually comes exceptionally um, handy. And also the central motor has such a high torque that if you just use a throttle, you're still gonna be able to go uphill. Before getting into the torque part, I yeah. wanna also mention another part. Some of our riders, they had some hip replacement injuries and they said that they cannot constantly pedal. Yeah. So for those people who are in the recovery process, having a throttle is very important because once their knees or you know other parts start to hurt or you know get tired, they have opportunity, they have the option to use the throttle mm -hmm. and they can finish their trip with the just throttle function, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like if you, the, the second you are tired of using the pedals, you can just switch to pedal assist. So this is throttle mode and you're good to go. So we, you say that the hub motor of the Duffo is very powerful. Can we say the same thing for the mid-drive motor for the Duffo 2? Because I see that most of the mid-drive motors in the market, they are 36 volt, 250 watts. So what is the power ratings of this mid-drive motor? Yeah, this one is a 48 volt motor and it's actually 500 watts. So you can expect lots of power from this and it actually has 95 newton meter torque on it so it can easily take you uphill so 95 newton meter to give a comparison some of those we cannot give the brand maybe here is german uh brands their torque is 45 yeah 50 four, four, 60 five, newton meter yeah, exactly exactly so can we say it is like 50 percent more powerful than them because when you're riding those brands, their maximum speed is 20 miles per hour. Yeah, you can say that. I mean, I wear around 220 pounds, and with this bike on throttle, I can easily make about 28 miles per hour. But of course, that's when we disable the speed limit. 48 volts, so I guess the battery should be 48 volts, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it is 48 volts and it's 12 amp hours. Um, and this one, on this model, we use actually Samsung battery cells. So it, it is, it gives you a very good range, about 60, 70 miles. Um, and you can actually increase that by using, like it depends on the road conditions and the pedal assist mode that you're riding on, but it should give you a minimum of 60 miles of range. And 48 volt 12 amp hour battery is equal to 576 watt hour battery. Yeah. So if some of our customers try to compare with those European models, they can check that parameter is generally like 20% mm -hmm. or 25% uh, higher capacity. So it gives like a more range to the mm -hmm. bike. Uh, so similar bikes with like similar batteries, mm -hmm. but they have the hub motor, they have a much lower range i think we have some customers they have those questions you know why a 48 volt 12 amp hour battery in this bike has a 60 70 mile range but in a hop motor only can go with 30 mile or 40 mile well, the what answer is, is very e e very simple on that one if you use the same battery for with the hub motor and a mid-drive motor mid-drive version is always going to have a longer range because the mid-drive motors are so much more efficient so what are the advantages of having a inner hub gear? Um, the advantages are pretty simple, pretty straightforward actually. First of all, it is maintenance free. Since all of the gears are inside a um, locked environment, they, they are not exposed to anything, any outer effect. So it's completely maintenance free. That's number one. Number two is since there's, there are no derailers, you don't have a chance to actually, you know, like it, it doesn't have a chance to get um, it is less vulnerable, yeah, right? Yeah, it's much less vulnerable, essentially, at the end of the day. And the final one is, on the conventional gears, you cannot actually change the gears when you're stopping. You have to be going. But on this one, you can easily change the gears when you are actually stationary. Oh, so you change the gear like a throttle? Yeah, exactly. You, there are three gears on this one, and we can change it when it's stopping, and that's it. And this is actually very useful, especially if you're living in a hilly area. So if you stop in a red light and you want to start again, you can just you know put it to first gear and it'll be easier to take off. And when you're climbing uphill, changing gear to higher gear is generally very difficult, right? Especially yeah. if it's 
giving kind kind of a resistance to you. Yeah, exactly, exactly. On this one, there, there are no problems with changing gears. Now this was the part which was very challenging for us because we use a very powerful motor. It has a very efficient gear system. Because of 20 inch diameter, it has a very high acceleration, a very high torque. We will get into that part later on. But the brake, because you know, in most of the e-bikes you can ex you can accept if the battery doesn't function one every 10,000 times. The motor, you can accept it. You can just repair it. But for the brakes, you cannot expect any kind of problem, right? Yeah, I mean, for the brakes, essentially, if, if it's a performance e-bike like this, a high performance e-bike like this, you can you have to rely on them. If you're going downhill 35, 40, 40 miles per hour, you have to trust what kind of brakes you're actually using on them. And to be honest, these brakes are, they stop the second you pull them it's, it's actually so great like it takes some time to get adjusted to because they stop so fast and so good it, it is incredible and they are all hydraulic brakes yeah these are all uh, both front and rear we use the um, Tektro hydraulic disc brakes and these are made especially for electric bicycles and we are using 160 millimeter rotor in the front and 180 millimeter on the back yeah and one good thing about the hydraulic brake is even you can press it with one finger, right? The levers. Yeah. Because hydraulic just multiplies the power you apply. So without using much power, you can just break it. So for some people who have difficulties in their hand, you know, have some, you know, injury, they can still use the hydraulic brake without having any problem. Yes. And I want to ask you some questions about why we use the 20 inch tires because 20 inch tires basically give you more power, especially when you're climbing uphill. Can you explain it? Yeah, um, essentially the 20 inch wheels, they accelerate much better than larger um, wheels. So that's the reason why we actually use them. They have multiple, they have multiple advantages compared to larger 26. 28 inch um, wheels. Also, one of them is especially if you're riding it in a city, and this bike is designed to be ridden in a city. It is so easy to maneuver with small, with smaller wheels. Like for example, if I turn this this much, oh yeah, it like it is super easy. I'm doing a 90, 90 degree maneuver, which in real life you won't be able to do even. But on this one, since the tires are small, it's so easy. And even it's like a small tire, I see that both of the wheels have 36 spokes so it gives a more robust to it right because yeah. uh, they have like much thicker spokes on it and those white lines you know it has like uh, reflectors on the tires on yeah, on the sides of the tires they're reflected so it gives you extra visibility and extra yeah. safety in the traffic yeah, yeah while we were talking about the visibility let's talk about the lights because it has integrated lights both on the rear and in the front. Yeah, I mean, we especially put, put LED lights in all of our models, we have this as well. So you just press uh, plus button for a while. As you can see, the screen is also backlit. And the rear light is on, if you can see it. Yeah, even if it is uh, daylight, you can yeah. still and see we it. We have a high lumen front light as well, which, which is also adjustable. But and these are not uh, these are these are powered with the actual bike's battery, so they are not essential. There is no like battery inside it, like in other models. Uh, so because before we had those ones, like when we were kids, we had a uh, yeah. rear light, and sometimes you turn on the front light, but you forget to turn on the rear light. Yeah. And sometimes it's low on the battery. You need to change it. It's like kind of a uh, pain to do it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the safety is very important. The safety features, all in all, if you, if you want to count them, is the rear light, the front light, the hydraulic disc brakes. Um, we thought about everything, essentially, on this bike. There's n almost nothing that can go wrong on this bike. And it has both front and the rear mudguard. It's important if you are living in a city like Seattle, San Francisco, New York, when it is like raining a lot. In any city that has rain, and if you want to ride a bike, you have to have um, mud guards. Not only not, not only when it's raining. I mean, there there can be puddles around the around the road, so you don't want to get splashed with that with that puddle. 
and there is a there is a chain cover over there and it's like a full size chain cover yeah there's a full size chain cover so that's also another thing that we added in most of the um central so motor models bike is by the way generally really very really light you just yeah, it is super move it very really easy um in most of the mid drive models they do not put these chain covers for some reason i don't know but we're gonna ride it in the city and when i'm riding my bike in the city i'm usually dressed up like this and i'm i'm going to work or doing something and no one wants to get you know the stains on their pants so with this cover you don't get anything on your uh, pants and you, you keep clean we have some customer who are into rv or yacht you know they go <laughs> for they go with their rv for a travel for a couple months and one thing they complain is not only about the space the bike uh, consumes in the RV but also the difficulty of loading to the RV so can you lift it up to like an RV yeah, loading dock? for example at the back they usually have the bike rails at the back of their RVs and this one is super easy to hold like you just you can easily hold it like this and if even if, even if this is even if it's this, this is too heavy they can just pull out the battery and then you know hang it at the back of the RV I think make it even more lighter to and easier to lift it i think most people will not need to do it because yeah, it already is like it, very light it's like case. just a little bit more heavier than a normal bike yeah i'm just saying in case and the frame is all aluminium so they don't need to worry about the corrosion yeah they don't and this is the part which is more related with me because when we're de designing this bike we also want to focus on people who cannot exercise a lot who want to use the bike to lose the weight mm -hmm. so is it comfortable for overweight people yeah it is i mean the the step this step is pretty low so if you have uh, mobility issues especially if it's from because of your weight it'll be much easier to get on the bike when this bar is lower so it is easier for um, overweight people to actually get on the bike and we still give the option of throttle if they get if they get tired but the, with the central motor they can still do their exercise um, but they can also get the necessary push that they need. And they can also adjust the level of support they get it because like yeah. maybe we have some customers they don't know much about the pedal assist mm -hmm. of the e-bike. So can you show it like when it is like one, what does it mean? Yeah, I can show. So for example, when it is at the one, it's going to give you the least, it's going to give you the least pedal assist and you can go all the way to six. And of course on six it doesn't feel like you're biking anymore because it gives so much uh, assist to you. But when you're climbing uphill it's a different story. Yeah, that, that is completely different. Even, even then I uh, just travel sometimes. <laughs> now it's the most important part, the pricing. Yeah, so many people ask us about this because the bikes, equ equivalent bikes or even less than this, these bikes for example with like mid-drive motor, hydraulic disc brakes, inner hub gears, these kind of bikes are selling for about three, four thousand dollars in the market right now. But we wanted to provide the fair pricing for everyone so that people can actually afford this and, um, and enjoy the, their electric bikes. So this bike is priced at $16.99. Um, the delivery actually begins uh, in June. And right now you can actually place pre-orders. We just require a $99 down payment with it. And if you pre-order right now, um, the price is $15.99. And we give the front basket and the rear basket and a pannier bag for free. Plus, it also includes free shipping. So you, you all in all, you're getting $300 worth of um, accessories and discounts. And the assembly of this bike is pretty easy, right? Yeah, we made a video about it. We, we can put the link somewhere here and then uh, people can check it. it. It literally takes about seven minutes. Okay, so that's quite easy. Yeah.